you know that a whooping 90% of the viewers on this channel have not yet subscribed? If you're new here and enjoying the content, we would be immensely grateful if you could hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and share this video. Welcome back, learners, to another exciting episode of Computer System Servicing Exploratory. Whether you're a beginner or simply looking to brush up on the basic of CSS, these videos are tailor-made for you. So let's dive in and expand our knowledge together. Using and maintaining hand tools. Utilizing and upkeeping manual tools assists in developing the necessary expertise, abilities, and mindsets required to recognize, repair, utilize, and maintain tools and equipment in the field of computer system servicing. This serves as the fundamental stage in attaining proficiency as a computer technician. In proper tools and selection, having a comprehensive toolkit is essential for repairing and maintaining hardware equipment. This toolkit should consist of all the necessary tools required for various types of tasks. In the following discussion, you will gain knowledge about the specific tools needed for accomplishing a task. Number one, long nose pliers, usually for holding, bending, and stretching the lead of electronics component or connecting wire. Number two, wire cutter, used for cutting copper, brass, iron, aluminum, and steel wires. Number three, Flathead screwdriver, usually drive or fasten negative slatted screws. Number four, Phillips head screwdriver. It is used to drive or fasten positive slatted screws. Number five, soldering iron, a hand tool used to join two or more metal conductors with the support of soldering lead melted around it. Number six, soldering stand. This can be an easy hand tool stand composed of a heavy duty metal base and a reinforced spring holder. Number seven, soldering lead. It could be an alloy accustomed to join together metal work pieces. Number eight, soldering flux. It allows you to supply a clean soldered. Number nine, crimping tool. It may be a device used to conjoin two pieces of metal by deforming one or both during a way that causes them to carry one other. Number 10, wire stripper. It may be a small handheld device that usually strips the electrical insulation from electric wires. Number 11, tweezer. It is a tool used to manipulate small parts. Number 12. Anti-static wrist drop. The first line of defense against ESD, the most common personal grounding device used and are required to be used if the operator is sitting. Number 13. Multi-tester. It tests the integrity of circuits and therefore the quality of electricity in computer components. Number 14, LAN tester. It designed to check most network cable wiring. In proper use of hand tools, a computer technician needs to use the right tools from their toolkit while fixing computers. It is important to know how to properly use tools in workspaces. There are various tools that can be magnetic, when working with electronic devices, it's crucial to ensure that the tools you are using are not magnetic. Magnetic fields can potentially damage data stored on magnetic media. To check if a tool is magnetic, you can hold the screw near it. If the screw is attracted to the tool, it shouldn't be used. Number one, screws. These screws can become 
exposed if you over tighten them with a screwdriver. An exposed screw may mar within the screw hole, or it should not tighten firmly. Discard exposed screws. When we are working with flat head screwdriver, don't use a flat head screwdriver to get rid of a billet screw. Never use a screwdriver as a wrecking bar. If you can't remove a component, check to determine if there's a clip or latch that's securing the component in position. When we are working with Phillips screwdriver, use a Phillips head screwdriver with cross head screws. Don't use this kind of screwdriver to puncture anything. This can damage the pinnacle of the screwdriver. Number two, soldering iron and stand. When we are working with soldering iron in the stand, always use a soldering iron stand after soldering any components to avoid burns or damage. Number 3. Crimping tool and wire stripper. When using the crimping tool and wire stripper, do not squeeze super hard because the aim of it is just to form a bend within the center of the crimp bed and to insulate the wire. Number 4. Long nose pliers and tweezer. After using the long nose pliers and tweezer, clean it properly with cleaning oil and rugs to avoid them from becoming dull and rust. Number five, multi tester and blend tester. Always maintain the functionality and accuracy of multi tester and blend tester to ensure the accurateness of measurement of any things that you just shall measure. Number six, Anti-static wrist strap. Always proper check the device before using it to make sure that you just are free from danger and to avoid serious damage to the person engaged in it. In proper maintenance of hand tools, to prevent tools from damage, we must properly maintain our tools to stay them safe and usable condition. Here are the subsequent requirements for tools and equipment maintenance. Number one, obtaining a duplicate of the upkeep schedule recommended by the manufacturer. Number two, ensuring that the maintenance is performed as needed. Number three, ensuring that the persons performing the upkeep are competent. Number four, retaining records of maintenance or service conducted. Number five, specifying who is to blame for overseeing equipment maintenance, and where the records are kept. Number six, putting in a system for removal and tagging of damage or defective tools and equipment to ensure that the tools and equipment remain in good condition and last for a protracted time, store them properly so it will be easy to search out when needed and are less likely to be lost. The PPE, or Personal Protective Equipment, this is to shield you from hazard that will happen during working time at your workplace. Always wear PPE equipment like gloves, safety glasses, protective masks, and rubber sole shoes. In conclusion, using and maintaining hand tools involves understanding their functions, employing correct techniques, and practice regular maintenance. By following these principles, Individuals can safely and effectively utilize hand tools for various tasks, thus increasing productivity and achieving satisfactory results. And that's wrap for today's lesson. Wishing you a safe and fruitful day ahead, filled with joy and success. May this video be the perfect boost to expand your knowledge. Looking forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you so much.